What's up guys and gals, it's Relentless here bringing you a Division 2 build video. Hope you all are having a fantastic day. If you happen to be new to the channel or you're just enjoying the content, then be sure to ground and pound that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to trigger that bell and turn on post notifications, that way you know each and every time a build video is uploaded or a stream goes live. What's up baby, you trying to check out my build too? I'm trying to show the viewers here. Come on, I'll talk to you later, alright? I'll holler. Alright, well, don't take it any personally. But, you know, I don't want you to steal the name of this one just like you did the last one, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that Chupacabra build that I put out uh, like over a month ago, yeah, I know it was you. Yeah, you got you thought it was so popular, and since that is the only build on the whole YouTube sphere that has anything to do with the name Chupacabra, at 112k views, you're thinking, hmm, I need content. I can't think of no other original ideas or original names to call it myself. I'll just steal his name. But it's okay. I'm not mad. But those of you out there, don't get caught up in imitation because this is the originator right here. So if you want to check out the original Chupacabra build, those links are on my channel as we have all updated versions of that build. But anyways, hopping into this build. Starting out with the weapons, military M60 E4, 36.3k base damage. I haven't rolled anything on it yet, unhinged, allegro, and rhythm. You want to mod it as you see fit into your personal preference. For my playstyle and personal preference, I'd rather stack accuracy and then of course having a rate of fire in the magazine. And the reason for this is you're utilizing the demolitionist for the baked in LMG damage, but not necessarily more for that because of the changes that are coming in title update 4 if everything goes as planned. Which is you'll be able to pick you know, three archetype weapons for any uh, specialist you choose and you can use their skill tree. But with the explosive damage and the main component of when you want to run with the LMG on console is with unhinged LMG is because when using an armor kit while you're a demolitionist, you gain 100% weapon handling for a period of time. So, you can literally beam and have pinpoint accuracy while utilizing the unhinged talent on your weapons just by popping an armor kit. And speaking of armor kits, that is why on the backpack I have a Petra, gives you 10% LMG damage. But it is the main talents. Efficient, using the armor kit, has a 50% chance to not consume the armor kit. Thus, being able to utilize that benefit from the demolitionist by popping an armor kit to gain that 100% weapon handling, and in turn you have double armor kits at your disposal. But at the stats on this one is not that great. I'm looking for a better one. This one just had the perfect talents that I wanted. But I wish I had one with higher base damage. This one only has four, and of course only 8% armor. Of course, I can up that armor, and uh, I'm just needing the materials, and then I can apply, uh, I think it's a little over 21K armor. So that's definitely gonna put me uh, close to 300K armor and 160K health. So that is really, really dope. But moving on to the other three main components. And that is the Gila or Gila chest piece, whichever and however you prefer to pronounce it. And for having those three pieces, you get 5% total armor, 20% hazard protection, and then 15% pulse skill power. We're not utilizing the pulse here, but the only reason why there's a three uh, piece Gila here instead of two is because Gila or Gila comes with uh, really high attributes as uh, well as a lot of mod slots. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. So if you can utilize them in certain slots and still get to like uh, the same archetype weapon, in this case Petrov, and you're still able, if you want to go AR, put up a Fenris piece in there to get that 10%, then put them in where you see fit and wherever you can because they are really, really dope. But as you can see on this chest piece, 20,785 armor, 14.5% weapon damage, 27,021 health. We're utilizing Bloodsucker. Depleting an enemy's armor adds a stack of 25% bonus armor for 10 seconds. Max stack is 6. And this chick behind me is trying to grind up on me. Hold off. I'm, I'm trying to get this build video done. Just chill, woman. I'll be with you in a second. Anyways. And it has two defensive mod slots and a utility. And we get 7458 health, 7% health regen, 692 armor uh, regeneration, 117 skill power, plus 280 skill power going to the chem launcher, and then plus 158 skill power on top of that 117 going to the pulse. In the second defensive mod, we have 5107 armor, 3% total armor, and then 1619 armor on kill. Moving on to the second, and these this is where it's gonna vary just a little bit, so stick with me. If you're in the dark zone, and pinning is very situational, I do recommend having diff different variations of knee pads. 
such as if you're trying to run uh, like a fast armor regeneration build, then run some self-adjusting on it. If you're more utilizing cover for that extended survivability and, and ways to extend your life by way of patience, and then if you come across a group that that's really not working, they're more or less pushing into you with Defender Drone Shields or Hipfire LMG, then you want to kind of counter that with the likes of the Talent Cloaked. When your armor is depleted, nearby enemy skills are disrupted for 10 seconds, can occur once every 30 seconds. So if you're getting pushed or they want to do figure eights in their, you know, chem pools and just dance around thinking that it's, you know, uh, a nomad from Division One, and you're sitting there like, really, dude? Really? Really? Then just put on this, destroy their uh, repair drone or their little pokeball rolling at their feet, giving them heals, and of course their chem launcher heal, whatever the case, and you know, you're good to go. But attributes, 11% armor, and they mod slots, thus the Gila or Gila knee pads having the two defensive mod slots, so a total of three. You get 86-63 health, 2% extra incoming healing, 4% skill health, and of course the second one, 56-55 armor. Then 445 armor regeneration, and then 2.5% total armor. Now moving on to the holster. Now some of you have commented in the past, well why don't you use Devastating? Devastating gives you plus 5% weapon damage. I don't get a talent on the Gila or Gila holster, but I do get 42,748 health, 371 skill power, which is you can get the same on the likes of things like the Fenris with Devastating. But the... Uh, these particular type holster will give you two offensive mod slots. So instead of getting like 5% from Devastating, I also get that same 5% with one mod, but then I get an additional 2.5% weapon damage, 1.5% headshot damage, and then 3% optimal range for that additional offensive mod slot. So it comes in really, really handy. Now on to the two-piece True Patriot. I love the two-piece true patriot. It works out really, really well and is very effective, especially with LMGs and utilizing Bloodsucker because the faster you can rip off armor is the faster you can proc, proc Bloodsucker. So if they are dancing around their pools and just trying to get their heals back up with this build and that much damage you're doing with an LMG, if they, even if they do get like two or three hell, uh, armor bars back and you rip them back off, hey, that's a Bloodsucker proc. And they can sit there and dance all day and you can just sit there and proc all day because they last one last every 10 seconds and you can get up to six at a time. So by all means, let them dance. But anyways, there's two different variations. If you want a little more damage to elites, then by all means go with a mass such as I have here with the 37% damage to elites or higher. And of course the health. But then the ones I'm actually utilizing gives that little extra 10% crit chance and it has 18,146 health. Because due to the sustained high damage of the LMG, you don't really need too much to deal with NPCs in the dark zone. And of course we have the gloves. 12% LMG damage and then 9462 health. And that is the 10% multiplicative damage to armor. Now you could go with you know different variations of the two piece, but let's go over that thought process. If you go backpack with a true patriot, you might get some good stats, you lose, lose out on two talents. The same with the chess piece. You could lose out on one major talent or two other talents if you're using Fenris and things of this nature. But if that is something you want to do, then by all means, go for it. The holster, you will be missing out such things like devastating, precise, uh, also like the two offensive mod slots. So you're going to be missing out some damage if you go with holster. You can go with knee pads, that's another obvious choice, but if you go with knee pads here, then you're going to be losing out on some armor and survivability. And I have a pair here that has crit chance on them, but as you can see, it drops, and even I have one defensive mod slot that gives me a little health, I can get my health back, but armor, I can't live with that 238 armor. And of course, that's why we come to the gloves. Yes, you are missing out on the 5% devastating, but the 10% multiplicative damage is doing more damage than what that measly 5% based weapon damage is going to actually give you. So that is my line of thinking. And a quick recap, as far as when it comes to pistols, uh, my holster talent I prefer overlap. While holstered, your equipped weapon gains handling bonus based on this weapon's type. And of course, you know, just whatever you want to use as your secondary. I like the evasive talent on Sweet Dream, but use Bladder Mouth, whatever you want. And now let's go over the character sheet of the M60. As you can see, 36,313 weapon damage. And then of course we have 42% all weapon damage bonus, and then 41% LMG damage bonus for a total 83% total weapon damage. 272, 481 armor, 1138 armor regen, 168, 663 max health, 
with health regen at 90,235, 90, with 20% hazard protection, bleed, blind, burn, disrupt, disrupt, and shock. 611 skill power, 891 going to the chem launcher, and 884 going to the pulse. So use it as you see fit, and yes, I know the pulse uh, is definitely good, especially if you're running a lot of uh, high uh, cooldowns on it. But the 10 piece uh, multiplicative damage to armor is always, you don't have to worry about adding cooldown onto it to maximize it. You don't have to add skill power. So basically, you want to get as tanky as possible, as much damage as possible, and just go out there and rip them up. I'm going to leave a link in the description below of a full gameplay video of me utilizing this build. Thank you guys so much for all the continuous love and support. I am very much appreciative. I cannot be doing this without you and just that ongoing support of the ones that have been following me ever since the beginning and then to my new followers and subs now. Thank you guys so much. Much love to you. Appreciate all the love and support. We're almost at 7K. Let's keep this thing a rocking, baby. But leave your comments in the comment section below and we'll see you guys. Fudging later.